It is my very pleasure to introduce our next speaker is Mr. Levi Lazorovitz, head of research cyber arc. He will be giving a talk titled Bypassing Windows, Hello for Business and Pleasure. Levy is the head of security research at CyberArk Labs. He and his team focus on offensive security and security innovation. They specialize in spotting security gaps in emerging technologies and developing innovative new security layers and effective mitigations to fill those gaps. Recent research include Research, recent research vectors, my apologies, include acclaimed work on cloud security, containers, and Kubernetes security and authentication and identity security. So in just one or two minutes, he will be joining. I did just speak with him on the phone. I know he's on the way now. And we're, we're apologizing again for the delay, but it will be a very good talk. He's going to show us how to bypass Windows Hello. As you all know, Windows Hello is the authentication uh, to get into your Windows computer. So I actually love Windows Hello because I don't like typing my password. So I just have um, the, the uh, camera identify me and it lets me in. So Levy has joined now. Let's just give him a moment to set up his uh, system. And Levy, I've already introduced you so they know who you are and they are also aware of the topic. And whenever you're ready, you can uh, begin your talk. And it looks like you're still muted. Maybe you're still getting your... Um... Hey, hello. Hi, Levy. It's uh, Levy. How are you? Let me just turn my camera and uh, share my ah. screen with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We know you have a very busy schedule. We know I also know it's your day off, your one day of the week off. So really appreciate you taking the time to come and, and be with us here today. With 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 pleasure, it's a great pleasure uh, being here. And thank you for inviting me. So you can go ahead and begin. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, the audience is aware. I, I did introduce you right before you joined, so they know the work you're doing and they know that you work with CyberArk as the head of security research. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll I'll get uh, right uh, right to it. And we because you have uh, just uh, uh, not so not so much time and a lot to cover. So thank you all. Uh, uh, for uh, connecting to, to this session. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we'll be talking about face recognition and bypassing Windows Hello. Uh, I, I want to start um, with uh, saying something that uh, you might know, might, might, might be a little controversial, um, but your face is in public domain. Um, th this is how I want to start this session. And what I mean by that is that Nowadays with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, I'm sure that you had a chance to upload your face to so many uh, social media and other, and other uh, web applications. So for a uh, threat actor or someone that try, tries to impersonate you using your photo, it's kind of child's play to, to get your photo and, and create the ID, whether it's physical or identical. Um, and actually, um, the faces you see here is not real, and I'll get to that point a little a little later. It was created by um, um, a, uh, a general or, or adversarial uh, network um, that create faces for something that I'll cover a, a little later. So get, getting back to my first point, your face is, is public domain, I kind of felt or, or, or you know, I kind of understand that it's very similar to something that you probably can't became aware of, uh, which is which are NFTs. I won't get into exactly uh, what it is and how it works. I know it's, there is a big buzz around it and and a lot of a lot of money uh, nowadays around that. Uh, but one one of the first NFTs were created um, were those crypto kitties, um, where you can uh, create one or buy one and breed those crypto kitties to create another. Uh, another kitty, and you see that the prices here in the crypto kitties market um, uh, mentioned in Ethereum. And I'm saying that it's like our face in social media today, because although you can probably prove that you own it and it's your face, you don't really own it in 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 the digital world in the internet. 
Um, so anyone can use it for whatever reason, some malicious burns, probably some not. So, um, uh, and I'll get to, uh, I won't get into the NFTs, I'll get to the, uh, to the face and the, um, um, how it might be used for face recognition. Um, all right, so with that, um, biometric authentication and face recognition becomes very common and popular. Um, as, we, as we all know. Uh, there are so many biometric authentication um, uh, options, including uh, retina recognition and uh, DNA matching, fingerprint, of course, and voice recognition. And face recognition is one of those um, biometric options. Um, and it's both for our own personal, it is used today for our own personal use and business use. Uh, we use it on our phone to access our personal personal data, and we use it on our laptops to access corporate data uh, if we are uh, uh, part of a larger organization. So it is used as we were. I, I don't think I need to reinforce this point. It's, it's pretty clear. And and of course, there are good use for it, right? Because it should, biometric authentication and uh, face recognition authentication should replace plain uh, uh, password-based attacks. Like, Plain boot force, password spraying, and credential stuffing. I'll I'll touch on those just in a in a minute. Well, so um, plain boot force is possible. You know, just guessing passwords again and again because we are not PRG. We are not pseudo random generators, right? We are not as humans. We're not generating a random passwords. We need something that we can remember. Um, password spraying is possible because we think alike. Uh, when then a new year uh, comes, a uh, new calendar year, uh, 2022, then uh, some of us might change our password with uh, 22, 2022 at the end. Uh, so we think I like so password spraying, guessing passwords for different users, uh, and overcoming or circumventing uh, uh, guessing controls or, or uh, access limitations um, becomes common uh, by threat actors. And lastly, credential stuffing is possible because we recycle. Um, we use same password for different services. So biometric has a good impact on, on security because it makes those uh, uh, password-based attacks a little less relevant. And I think that Microsoft just put it the best. They just said, okay, Windows Hello, uh, if you are familiar uh, with it or not, um, Windows Hello is Microsoft's approach to biometric authentication. Uh, and the new form of authentication. And what they're basically saying, hey, uh, you don't need the password. Now you are the password. And I'm adding to that for the good and the bad. All right, so <clears throat> um, in this session, I'll try to show you um, the attack surface that is associated with face recognition, specifically with Windows Hello and another attack vector uh, that is relevant for, for, for face recognition. So you know that uh, there are not just those attack surfaces related to passwords, there are also attack surfaces associated with face recognition. And maybe, it may be obvious, maybe not, but it's not, it, it's not a, uh, a straightforward, easy um, attack surface. So just before getting into the details, just a few words about my, myself. Um, I'm the head of research at CyberArk Labs, and my main goal at CyberArk Labs is to work with my team, uh, security researchers, malware researchers, penetration testers, to find emerging threats in emer emerging technologies. And this is why the new form of authentication, uh, face recognition, one of them, is of interest to us. And uh, last point, I'm a former uh, Israeli Air Force uh, pilot. Um, so uh, I have a, stories, a few stories about that, but I won't get into that much now. Uh, and uh, just as a, by the way, before I, I move, I'm moving on, uh, many of our research is published in our CyberArk Labs blog, and you can also find more details about the research that we're telling you today in our CyberArk Labs blog post. So moving on into the attack vectors of face recognition. Um, so there are three main attack vector uh, related to uh, biometric authentication or face cognition. Um, first one, the BioCat, uh, is attacking the authentication algorithm itself. 
how Windows Hello or other face recognition engine interprets the data or face into uh, the data currently in the database and how this mechanism works. We can attack that. Um, second attack vector is environmental or setup um, attack vector. Not attacking directly the authentication, but attacking how the environment or setup works. So for example, if I have a camera um, that I use for my face recognition, I might be able to manipulate it. Um, or the, the environment itself, the operating system, or the application itself that implements the face recognition. Yeah, can bypass, uh, a bypass could be also happens there. And lastly, uh, see the communication key here. Uh, we can attack the communication uh, that happens after the um, uh, authentication engine processes the data and what it says to a uh, in an identification server or the other resource. And in, in this session, I will be focusing on authentication algorithm. I'll share with you uh, a, a brilliant research, in my opinion, done by a few researchers in, in, in the uh, University of Tel Aviv um, about a year ago or so. And I'll also share with you a cyber art lab research around both authentication and environmental setup attack vector uh, focusing on, on Windows Hello. We, Windows Hello is our, um, is our target, uh, which is a very common implementation of uh, um, face recognition. So though this would be the, the focus and uh, the uh, agenda for today. All right, so moving on straight to the first attack vector, attacking face recognition algorithm. Um, okay, here it comes. So question is, what if it is possible to create a master face, a face, real or not, that will match all or most of faces out there. So as soon as you get this face into uh, the uh, processing engine, the authentication engine, you 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 get granted access. So th this was the question that uh, the researchers in the University of Tel Aviv tried to answer. And what they came up with is something close. It's an actually nine faces that match around 60% of faces, which is pretty good. You, you, you can imagine that if I have access to your machine and you are running Windows Hello or other face recognition implementation, and I can inject in some way or form a face into the um, face recognition engine, I, can, I have more than 50% chance to get access to your device. This is a pretty amazing finding by uh, the guys at the uh, University of Tel Aviv. And uh, let, me, let me explain a little bit on, on what you're seeing here and how the research works. So what they've done uh, is um, they took a database of around 6,000 um, uh, auto-generated uh, uh, faces, faces created by a adversarial network um, creating um, a vir virtual faces. And they trained their model. Um, they trained a few models um, on that data set. And they have a test set to run uh, their, their new model um, against. And they had, um, they took, <coughs> excuse me, um, three types of uh, um, um, th three types of uh, 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 modeling approaches. I won't get into the details of it. Um, and they tested it on um, three different uh, types of optimization algorithms that try to choose the next phase to cover the most uh, of the test base. So uh, I I'll try to. I'll try to uh, to make, to make that simple, they try to implement a greedy, uh, um, a greedy implementation, a greedy approach um, that will cover as much of faces as possible. And so after looking into the um, different approaches, as I mentioned, I won't get much into the details. Um, they, they look at um, um, 
different face descriptors. So there is a different ways to interpret a face into a vector. Uh, there is a, a sphere face, there is a face net, there is, there is dilly. And so they mis and match those different face descriptors with their different models. And the best result that they got, and you see here the, 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 last, uh, the last line here, are those nine faces that cover uh, more than 60% um, using DLib, uh, DLib uh, uh, face descriptors um, on the 6,000 face databases. So this is the, 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 that was their, their best um, uh, result that, uh, that they got. Um, and, and one thing to note here is that maybe why those results are not that surprising is because our faces are not, or the characters, the, the um, um, different characteristics of our face is not uniformly distributed. It is not randomly generated. There are very specific patterns in which our face is created apparently. Um, and the optimization algorithm that they, that they selected actually takes advantage of that. Um, so if some, someone ever tell you, hey, uh, I think that you're, uh, you remind me of someone, this is exactly what is being exploited uh, in, this type, uh, in this type of attack. And getting back to my point about your faces in the public domain, when you post your picture in, in social media, you post, your face out there, you post your vector, uh, your face vector out there, you post your future password out there. Um, so um, that, uh, that, 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 that was their research and getting a little bit into um, the, uh, the, the process itself, just so um, you'll better understand how, the, how that worked. So what they wanted to maximize, looking into the uh, academic um, academic uh, perspective now is that our um, 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 our, our X, the image or the face that uh, that we chose, matches the rest of the vectors here, the face descriptors, the other faces in in the database, within a um, a, 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 a an assumed threshold. So there is a, a threshold of how uh, that defines how much you can deviate from the original image that you already captured. When you register a face recognition with Windows Hello or other application, um, there is a threshold um, that plays with a FAR and FRR, which is the percentage of deviation that could happen because of lighting, because of environmental uh, variables. So the more, the larger the, um, the this delta, um, the more chances that you'll um, be granted access with your face and the larger um, uh, probability that other face will also be considered as your face and will grant access. So within this delta, you wanna find this uh, face descriptor that matches the most other face descriptors. So what they've done here with their greedy approach is, all right, uh, create a, uh, an, 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 a, an image, a fake, completely fake uh, image, um, extract the face descriptor, see if that matches other face descriptor. If that matches, great, uh, add one to this face uh, function um, and, uh, and, and so on. Now try to optimize the, the, the choosing of the next face to match as much uh, um, as much faces as possible within within the database. So they try to maximize the number of faces a certain face um, matches to. So this is what they try to to maximize, and that worked pretty pretty well. And uh, you can watch uh, you can read the other details here in the link uh, below. All right. So this was a first approach of attacking the authentication algorithm itself taking advantage of the fact that at the moment, at least, um, many face recognition uh, mechanisms or algorithms are pretty naive. I, I won't say naive, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough word to, to say, but um, they're considering um, not that many uh, details in the face descriptor. The de delta here is, is pretty big to allow you easy access. 
another attack vector that I want to share with you, and this one is was done by uh, cyber research researchers, is attacking both algorithm algorithm and setup, and more specifically, as I mentioned before, targeting Windows Hello. Um, Windows Hello is a pretty common implementation of uh, of uh, biometric authentication and face recognition, both for users and and uh, and businesses and organizations. And it is used, according to Microsoft, by 80% of Windows 10 users. Um, this, is, uh, this is Microsoft numbers. So Windows Hello has a few feature, face recognition, uh, which uh, relies on uh, color and IR sensor uh, for image analysis, a pin code, which is pretty much a password and a uh, fingerprint. Windows Hello uh, comes in two flavors, one for home, which can replace your local password, and the other is for enterprise, where it can connect you to, to the domain, to the network, to uh, Azure authentication. So how that works. So you have an application and you have, uh, um, a, uh, for example, Windows Hello or other face recognition authentication provider. You have a, a face recognition provider that connects to the authentication mechanism within the operating system. And it connects to WinBO DLL that communicates with WinBio service. The WinBio service is built upon three components. First component is a storage. Uh, it's actually a folder. The WinBio database is a folder in system 32 that uh, keeps the database of uh, authentication data. Uh, so the, um, um, the processed uh, face vector uh, after you register your uh, uh, your face with it. Uh, we have the sensor, a compatible Windows Hello sensor, and an engine that actually processes the data and uh, allow you access, uh, decides whether it uh, your uh, the face showing to the camera now matches the one uh, in in the database. So what we've done in the research is. We thought, all right, well, what's the best uh, way in? Uh, what would be the best um, and most uh, and the simplest uh, attack vector we can do to bypass uh, Windows Hello? And we've decided to go with the sensor, changing the sensor. One of the things that we discovered in our research is that when you use an external web camera, it is not uh, uh, validated. Uh, for or, or checked for integrity. So you can replace it with, with whatever device you want, malicious or not. Um, so we've, we took the camera and replaced it with, uh, with an NXP board, evaluation board um, um, that you can simply connect to, connect to the uh, USB port and emulate a camera. And th this would allow us to inject the processed face recognition data straight into the Windows Hello engine, WinBio service engine. Uh, so this would this was our starting point. All right, so I wanna tell you, or share with you a little bit about the research vector and um, how we, uh, uh, how we um, uh, progressed with the, this uh, research project. So our first uh, uh, thing to do, or first thing that we've done is analyze the USB. So seeing how the camera sends data to Windows Hello engine on, on the operating system and learn how it happens um, in, through the communication. Um, second step was to mimic, uh, as soon as we understood what, how the, uh, uh, what data the camera sends, we wanted to mimic the, the camera and use the evaluation board to create, to create the camera with our um, uh, uh, captured target of a person. So we assume that we have the uh, image of the person, um, whether it's from social media because uh, our victim uploaded it to there, or whether we created it with, uh, with uh, the generative adversarial network, a fake face that could be a master face. Um, and lastly, we want to exploit it and bypass Windows alone. So this is the research process and let me quickly uh, share with you how it, uh, how it goes. So first thing first, um, we analyze the USB structure. And what you can see here is a simple Wireshark USB capture of the device descriptor, uh, the, our, our camera, 
excuse me, tries to uh, authenticate or tries to um, 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 uh, establish a, a session, a connection with, with the host, sending the um, ID of the vendor or the ID of the product um, and, and the uh, USB, you can also see here the USB <clears throat> version uh, listed here. I'll get to that in a moment. So there's um, other data sent as well. I won't get into all of the data being sent, but we learned a lot about looking at the USB, USB traffic and we captured it. And our idea was, okay, let's take that uh, traffic, move it to our, uh, um, or, or data, move it to our evaluation board, to our NXP board and send it from there and try to establish first communication to have my Windows Hello accept our evaluation board as a camera. So um, we've read a lot about uh, the USB specs. Uh, there are a lot of documentation about that. <clears throat> but one of the things that I wanted to, to share with you as, as researchers, as security practitioners, is it's great to read the specs. And you know, the, we, we all know the paradigm, uh, read the docs before you, before you ask a question. And that's completely right. But I also wanted to tell you, there is a certain limit to it as well. After you get the idea of how it works, and what data is available, you need to go hands-on. And this is what we learned because we got lost with all of the documentation that you see here with the, with the USB specs. So this was just one insight that uh, we learned the hard way um, uh, during this research. All right, so after we took the, the device descriptor that uh, established connection and, and uh, um, uh, a session with, uh, with the host, we went ahead and tried to implement the um, the camera. The camera needs to be uh, identified by Windows as a camera, and it also needs to be compatible with Windows alone. So when we uh, sent the communication, we recorded um, using the compatible Windows uh, uh, Windows camera, we got a first error. Uh, so Windows alone did not recognize our device as a camera. And one of the things that um, we really didn't understand is why. Uh, so um, we got ourselves again in, in Microsoft documentation and USB documentation. What we discovered is there is a descriptor called uh, BOS, uh, binary device uh, object store, as you see here, that, um, um, that if it reports a uh, BCD USB value greater than two, then it must be part of the descriptor sent. Uh, and if it's not there, it just will it will just fail. Uh, so for some reason, we didn't see it in our uh, in our traffic. Um, later on, we discovered that it was simply because we used uh, Windows uh, Wireshark Windows to uh, capture the traffic, and it showed only in Linux. For some reason, we didn't get into the details of that, but we figured it out and we got the Bose uh, descriptor uh, after switching to Linux. We recorded it. We also found the, the documentation around it. We added it to our, uh, uh, to our uh, data implemented in the, in the evaluation board and we got it to work uh, finally. Um, so you see here, um, see Windows Hello identifying our camera uh, or not giving us error, and then we can now we can move on to send the uh, the, ca the captured image, right? Uh, so we're moving on to the capture stage. Now, a Windows Hello compatible camera must implement two channels. Uh, first channel is a color frames, standard color frames, and the other one is uh, IR frames. <clears throat> it uh, it uses those two channels to make sure that the image in front of the camera is not just a, a, an A4 printed with, uh, with, with an image. Uh, this is where the IR comes into place. And there are also probably uh, lively checks, uh, livelihood checks in, within, within the engine. Um, so uh, we captured the data. And one of the things that we played around with is a Microsoft uh, Media Framework that can uh, show you what the camera currently captures. And we played around it with it. And what we found out is, and you might be surprised by it, is that actually uh, the color frames are not that important. What you see here is the uh, media framework. Uh, you see the color frame that we, uh, that we injected and the infrared frame 
that we uh, injected, recorded and injected. Um, this is uh, Omer, our uh, the researcher that lead uh, the research within labs. So you see his infrared uh, image and you see here SpongeBob. And what we discovered is actually that Windows Hello does not process the color frame um, ch uh, uh, um, channel at all. You just need to have something there, but Windows Hello only uses or processes the infrared source. Um, so we played around with it and, and just, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, we put here uh, SpongeBob. Uh, so this, this was our first discovery and this is why we focused on the infrared channel, uh, what we need to, who, to have, what data we need to have to bypass authentication uh, using the infrared channel. So we look again, again into, into the data and we try to understand what, how, how our frames uh, look like and what we need to send. And uh, what we, we looked at a bit about the, um, the implementation as um, we try to find first where a frame starts and when it ends, and you can see there's two fields that were important for us um, to, uh, to understand, to build the frames that we, that we wanna build. Um, so we looked into, into the data and uh, we also tried to understand what type of, um, of, of format of frames Windows Hello is using. So we again um, uh, looked, at, looked a bit about the documentation and found out that it uses a format called L8IR, uh, again, which is also well, well documented in, in the Microsoft uh, documentation, uncompressed A-bit Luma plane. This was very important for us to, for us to understand because the second step was to uh, take the um, IR images uh, or create an IR images based on a Facebook image and inject those into the evaluation board. So we needed to understand how the frame looks like. And I won't get into the details of, of Luma plane here, but uh, after understanding what, what the frame is being used here, um, we uh, use the same, same type of frames to inject into the evaluation board. And now it's time to see the demo. I'm sure we will be waiting for it. So this is how it works. I'll try to uh, moderate as we go. Okay. So uh, here we have a computer with Windows Hello. Omer, as I mentioned, is our lead researcher. This is our evaluation board. Uh, it pre recorded the IR images and we'll inject them as soon as it is being connected to our. Uh, laptop. As soon as we connect the evaluation board, Windows Hello will immediately start uh, using it. Uh, there's no camera uh, connected at the moment. We gave it. We gave it a few shots, and we got in. So what actually happened here is that a, as soon as we chose face recognition and connected the evaluation board, the evaluation board uh, was programmed to immediately push the data that we pre-recorded of our victim to, to Windows Hello, and we got access. And uh, to uh, uh, explain for a moment what, uh, how it works uh, in terms of, um, uh, of the attack vector, so um, if I have access to your machine and you deployed face recognition and I downloaded your face from uh, either social media or uh, even if, if I was close enough uh, to you to take a picture of you using uh, color camera or IR camera, I can take those, I can take this data, put it in, the, in my evaluation board after I process, process it and as soon as I have access to your laptop, just connect, um, connect it to, uh, to, to, the, uh, to, to your device 
and get access. So the device does the attack vector, excuse me, does require um, uh, direct access to to, uh, to to your device and to your face, but we assume it's pretty straightforward. Um, and in the near future, Windows Hello and other applications uh, will allow remote access using face recognition. And this is when this attack vector will become a major major threat. So let's say that let's talk a little bit about mitigations. So Microsoft obviously became aware. We disclosed this attack vector to, to Microsoft. Um, and they provided, and they said two things. First of all, there is an enhanced security feature for Windows Hello uh, requiring uh, a, um, a specific um, uh, web cameras that are compatible with Windows Hello to, uh, to be used. And in this case, it will make the attack, attack vector a little bit more difficult, but not so much uh, because um, I can mimic whatever camera you use uh, on, your, on your machine. But it, it does make it a little bit more difficult. And the other uh, mitigation that they offered and they actually deployed after we disclosed this attack vector is restricting authentication through embedded cameras only. So I cannot use an external USB, USB device for authentication. And again, it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but it does not mitigate complete the attack vector completely because USB cameras can mimic uh, built-in or embedded cameras as well. Um, because yet, yet again, you can change the web descriptors um, and, and play around with the type of, of camera that uh, is, uh, is being mimicked. So those do reduce the attack surface here, but, does, but do not mitigate the attack vector at all. Okay, so do, this uh, um, about uh, covers the mitigation part. To conclude, I want to say I want to say two things. So first of all, I want to address the, the deep fake that uh, we've we've all been hearing about. Deep fake, uh, like Obama face here, uh, was created by deep fake, um, deep neural network creating uh, fake faces uh, or playing around with with faces, uh, making them say things that they haven't said before, and so on. This technology will be used in the near future to circumvent face recognition authentication, uh, definitely. But you need a way to uh, inject it into the authentication process, whether it's through the evaluation board physically into the device or whether it be in the near future for, future, for uh, remote authentication. Uh, you need to send those packets uh, somewhere and our research uh, took that step uh, in, in mind. So this is the first point to, to know. Deepfakes will take uh, a major a significant uh, role in future face recognition authentication bypasses. And second thing that I started, uh, it actually started this session with, is your face now is in, in the public domain, whether you like it or not. Um, so to reduce the attack surface, uh, you should be careful where uh, you're you're uploading your your uh, your images to. So, for example, uh, in the last uh, two years, there were a couple of uh, face uh, face swap applications like like Zao and uh, Face uh, uh, Face Swap Online, I think it's called, that ask you, hey, uh, we can create a deep fake uh, um, video for you. We can plant your face and. In a, fame, in a popular common favorite, your, your favorite movie, or uh, or, or uh, a very known common uh, picture, uh, but they take your picture uh, at the end, and uh, that makes someone somewhere around the world um, get access to, to to your image, and uh, they might be able in the future to um, to impersonate you. To impersonate your digital identity, and in the near future, face recognition and our digital identity will be a significant one. Uh, so keep uh, keep that in mind when uploading your images uh, to social media or or or, or other applications. Um, that's uh, that's about it. So I hope you got a, a glimpse on on the face recognition authentication and possible bypasses um, and. Uh, Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Levy. That's a really, really nice talk. Very inspiring, inspires me to want to do research like that. I'm a researcher at university, so I see that and I get excited. <laughs>
Um, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, uh, everyone who's a participant, I hope you know you're, uh, you can you can put a question in the QA and I think Levy has a few minutes to answer. Uh, there is one question. How how do how to procure the IR portion? So I think they want to understand a little more. How is the IR uh, image created? Uh, that's a, that's a great question. So uh, in our research, what we have done is actually capture uh, a uh, in, in a, an original, an actual IR image of our victim. So we kind of play the spy game. Uh, trying to get close to to our victim and uh, capture and capture it, but I must say we also played a little bit around with a few open source projects that um, um, that convert a standard color colored image uh, within certain limits to a, something that is uh, similar to an IR image pixels. Um, we tried that a little bit. We had to tweak it a lot. We had to work to work on it a lot. And eventually it worked, uh, but it worked in a very specific lab, lab environment. So uh, to, uh, to, to, to answer that question, the, the easiest part would be to take uh, an IR image of the victim. And, uh, but it's also possible, especially for nation states, for law enforcement, for, for governments out there to convert, to convert, I mean, to convert the image and put some effort into uh, making those pixels uh, just right to fit the um, uh, the uh, the registered acquired reg um, image of of the victim. So it, it is possible. I won't say it's easy because it's not. It requires some effort, but it is possible. And I would guess that with the increase of uh, uh, you know AI technology, these things are going to get easier and easier to do because these gener generative networks, the GANs, are just going to get better, not worse. And so. All those kinds of conversions will get easier with time. But the, one more question is, and I, I'm not, uh, I'll just ask it. Can we use this config of authentication in edge technology? Uh, I'm not sure if it's biology. Are you asking if uh, like Windows hello kind of authentication in edge technology, or could you clarify that? Um, one question, uh, well, maybe not a question, but a comment I had for you, Levi, is I really just wanted to appreciate that you shared with us not just how it's done, but the journey that your team went through doing it, because that's something that is sorely missing, especially in the academic world where you read polished papers and everything just seems like it worked out perfectly. <laughs> there were no bumps along the way. It all just happened like oh, according not. to plan. It's, <laughs> a, it's, it's a great point, Gilad, you know, and in, in our research, we stumble on so many challenges and fails along along the way. And I think this research also made made that very, very clear to us. Uh, and, and we got a few tips, as I mentioned, you know, uh, we, we need to read the docs, but play, play uh, hands on and see what mm -hmm. works and, and what's not. And uh, yeah, that, 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 that's uh, actually a, a great point. Did you ever doubt that you would crack it and think, okay, let's just give up. We've sunk too much time into this and new project. Absolutely, absolutely. We we, we had a few challenges uh, along the way. The first, as first, as I mentioned, is even trying to understand what is being communicated with the uh, by the camera to to the host, and you know, figuring out that Windows Wireshark does not capture the whole data set was mm. a com a complete voodoo for us for about two weeks until we came across, uh, I, I think someone in, uh, in one of the firms saying that there is a difference here between how uh, Wireshark is uh, capturing data in Windows and in Linux. So there are so many challenges. Some of them are pretty, you know, pretty straightforward when you look back at them and, and some are not like, um, and, and some are, le are less obvious. Like um, for example, how uh, Windows Hello Engine works. We, we don't have the full documentation of how they process the data, um, but we played around with it. You know, we tried to, for example, uh, hide hide the eyes or hide half, half of the face when play, mm. playing with, with those, to see what data it relies on, on what's the delta, how much, how far can I get from the original uh, face uh, uh, face that was, was captured. Um, so th 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 that was le less trivial. But again, hands uh, re reading the docs to a certain to a certain amount and playing hands on with uh, with the with the technology um, uh, 
uh, allowed us to, uh, to to overcome those uh, those challenges eventually. Right. But we really believe that it is possible, especially because yeah. we know that that's the things, important part. The cognition algorithms you... out there are 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 are, are pretty straightforward, you know, at least nowadays. Okay, so thank you so much, Levy, for all your time for an amazing presentation. Really appreciate it. I'm definitely going to check out the CyberArks uh, blog post to read up on this more. It is close to my own research, so I'm, I'm doubly excited. Um, Balaji, we'll answer you in chat just because we're short on time. We're running behind. So I'm going to pass over to the next speaker. Uh, Dr. Krishna Shri will introduce our next speaker. And again, thank you, Levy, one more time. Thank you all. Thank you, Gilad.